This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. We've arrived at a very exciting point in this project. We're about to explore what could be the most mysterious and misunderstood area of vehicle repair, the valve body of an automatic transmission. A lot of people are intimidated by this assembly and feel that it's too much of a challenge for them to work on. But the truth is, it's not that bad as you're about to see. I'm glad you're back. This is Project 4L60E, Part 1, Lesson 4. In the last lesson, we took off the pan, disconnected the wiring harness, and removed the filter along with a few other parts. In this lesson, we'll remove the valve body, one to two accumulator, and the separator plate located between the valve body and the case. You'll need eight and 10 millimeter sockets, extension, ratchets, and a magnetic tool similar to this one. Before we get started, I want to pause and take time to encourage you to stay with this project. As I said before, some people might be reluctant to continue at this point because they think transmission repair is too complicated and difficult. I don't want to lose you. I promised in the introduction that working on a 4L60E would not be hard and that I would show you how to do it. So don't let the next few steps bother you. At first, the sight of the check balls and the maze-like passages of the valve body can be intimidating. But like I said before, it's not that hard. There are only eight check balls. Where they go is obvious and you do not have to really understand how the fluid flows in all those little passages. Let me show you. The only complicated aspect of this area is the variety of bolts. 17 bolts hold the valve body in place. Three have eight millimeter heads and are located as you see here in blue. The other 14 bolts have 10 millimeter heads and are located, as you see here, in red. Use an eight millimeter socket to remove the three bolts here. Place them in the small parts box. Use a 10 millimeter socket and remove the bolts indicated here. There are three different lengths to this group of bolts. These two are the shortest. This bracket limits the dipstick travel into the pan. These three are the longest. Remove the remaining nine. Put the 14 bolts and the bracket with the other small parts. Notice that we didn't remove the eight millimeter bolts here. 
They are much shorter and used only to attach the manifold pressure switch. We can now lift the valve body, but be aware the gasket underneath may stick to it and tear. It's okay if it does. Lift it straight up. Let the manual valve link fall away. Here's a different view. Carefully turn it over. If part of the gasket is on the valve body, just leave it for now. As you handle this assembly, take care not to damage the 3 to 2 and shift solenoids. Gently place it in the pan like this. There are seven check balls between the valve body and the separator plate. Here are the locations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If the transmission is reasonably level as we lift the valve body and the gasket doesn't hit them, they should have remained as you see them here. Use a magnetic tool to pick them up. The ball located here can be stuck in the plate. After years of the ball pounding and enlarging the hole, it can get jammed into it. If it won't come out, leave it in for now. If you are missing any of the balls, use the magnet to find them. Of course, your transmission may have fluid puddled in these areas, so dip the magnet down into them to fish them out. Once again, there should be seven. Put them in here. Remove the manual link like this. Put it with the small parts. Remove the three 10 millimeter bolts which attach the one to two accumulator housing. Place the bolts here. Remove the housing by prying sideways while holding the gasket down to keep it from tearing. Set it on the bench in this area. Remove the three 8mm bolts attaching the stiffener plate. Put these four pieces in the small box. Our next step is to lift up the separator plate and gaskets. Your gaskets are probably going to tear into several pieces, but be as careful as you can to try and minimize it. I always recommend saving an old gasket, or as much of it as possible, to help match it up with the new one later. If you have a ball stuck here, Push it out from the other side and put it with the others. Set the plate and the gaskets on top of the valve body. The last step for this lesson is to use the magnet and pick up the last number eight check ball located here. Place it with the others. This is the end of lesson four. 
I'll see you later in lesson five to finish up the valve body area.